Hi everyone, uh, it's already 3 p.m. and uh, let's start. I see that people are still joining, but uh, already we have more than 20 people uh, in, uh, watching us uh, live and attending. Uh, so, uh, hello, um, welcome to the uh, API uh, Gateway with uh, Kelly's uh, workshop. And uh, I'm one of your hosts today. My name is uh, Julius. I'm uh, the co-founder and uh, uh, one of the one of the uh, main main people in uh, Cloudwiser. And uh, for those who do not know us, we're the uh, advanced tier AWS partner, uh, focusing uh, uh, on the Baltic states and. Uh, so uh, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania are, are, are the countries and regions that we are uh, heavily focusing on. And, uh, um, you know, the thing uh, that we like the most and would do the most is uh, AWS resell. So uh, we basically, you know, just uh, add some extra benefits for those that are already using AWS and uh, just, just uh, uh, in return of uh, switching the billing under us. So, you know, if you're currently using AWS, so please check it out. Uh, I'm sure you will like uh, the added benefits uh, you might get. But uh, yeah, getting back to the workshop uh, uh, and what we're uh, focusing on today, um, it's really like a pleasure from my side uh, that uh, this is a purely uh, community event. And you know, uh, local AWS community in the Baltics is something that we're really uh, focusing on a lot. And uh, uh, today uh, will be like all of the event is being led by one of the uh, one of the people from from the local community, uh, Daniel Smirnov, uh, a solution architect uh, from Localize, um, one of the hottest startups in, in the Latvia and the Baltics, I would say. And you know, I'm I'm very happy that he decided to share his know-how and, and best practices. And uh, I really hope it will inspire some of you to follow his lead and to do the same. So you know, uh, because our local community will only be as strong as, as we make it by each playing some some part, as, as Daniel uh, will be doing today. Uh, before we begin, you know, some logistics. So uh, we'll. Um, you most probably see the Q and A section uh, at the bottom. So questions are very welcome, and please uh, uh, write all the questions there, and we'll then go through them uh, together with Daniel uh, after the the main part of the workshop. Uh, what is more, um, we in the reminder emails we mentioned that we have uh, training accounts ready for for especially for this workshop. So. Uh, a lot of you already uh, asked for them and, and I, I've just sent you uh, the links and credentials to, to join them. But if, if somebody else would like to like carry on through the whole workshop uh, uh, with a hands-on experience, so just just uh, drop, me, drop me an email to, uh, I'll just write it down, uh, the email address uh, in the chat, yeah. This is it. So uh, we still have plenty of, of, of accounts ready and I'll, I'll be happy to share them. Um, we plan to, to spend like an hour or an hour and a half. It depends if all goes well and if all the you know, demo gods will be with us. Uh, and basically that's it. Uh, I'll, I'll stick around just, just to moderate, but uh, Daniel is the main, uh, main uh, person here today. Uh, Daniel, are you ready to take over? Yep. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, Daniel, I, I cannot hear you. Uh, uh, Virt, uh, can you hear me, guys? Uh, huh. uh, well, it looks like uh, uh, people can hear me. Uh, so I will um, I will share my screen now. So please check, can you see my screen? 
Um, yeah. Let me open chat. So guys, hi everyone. Uh, nice to see uh, so many of you in this workshop. Welcome. Uh, and um, uh, so uh, please answer, can you see my um, uh, screen shared? Uh -huh, okay, fine. So um, welcome to this workshop uh, dedicated to AWS Chilis framework, uh, which is for serverless API uh, provided by AWS itself. Uh, I used it a lot and actually I like it a lot. So I just want to share uh, this with you and to uh, teach you how to use it as it can be done in an hour, I, I'm quite sure. So let's start. Uh, about me, uh, I'm uh, uh, working as solutions architect in uh, Localize at the moment. Uh, agree with Julius that this is uh, probably hottest uh, startup in Baltics uh, in these days. And uh, uh, Localize provide, uh, provides uh, translation services for developers uh, from developers. So, so if you need to translate your uh, web service or site or software product, please reach uh, our site. And we also hiring. So if you uh, feel uh, you can contribute and you can uh, be part of this company, which is growing fast, please check this uh, link I've posted um, to my presentation. And uh, probably um, you might be uh, mm, uh, our employee. Uh, if everything uh, will go uh, well. Uh, so I'm DevOps and cloud engineer for uh, last several uh, years and uh, I have uh, more than three years of uh, uh, AWS development experience. Uh, uh, actually, I worked with AWS in all my projects in the last three years without like any inter interruption. Uh, so, uh, and uh, mm, I'm a um, certified solutions architect associate from AWS as well. Uh, uh, so that's it about me, um, and uh, I want to um, I want uh, that we get our hands dirty uh, from the beginning. So please uh, open uh, my repository. I posted the link in the chat, and uh, I have a couple of links in README there, so you can uh, download this presentation. Uh, for reference, and uh, 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 there is a link to AWS Chalice framework as well, and um, uh, which is most important, please uh, use your credentials and uh, account number to um, log in into AWS console, as we will start right away uh, uh, with some practical exercise. So, um, uh, if you have any issues, uh, uh, please uh, post uh, your um, issue, um, your questions into chat, and uh, maybe Julius can help you, or I will comment. So after you log in into AWS, please go to Cloud9 uh, service and create your um, environment, uh, which we will use for our deployments. So. Um, I think I can enlarge this. Uh, so uh, click on create, create environment. Um, should we do this way? Uh, um, please give some like, um, uh, some uh, clear name to this environment to help us uh, in the identify and delete it after a workshop like this. And then uh, uh, keep all uh, settings default, uh, but uh, platform, please uh, set uh, platform to Ubuntu server uh, instead of uh, Amazon Linux. This is important to have uh, everything uh, working in terms of packages and um, 
preparation of our environment. So uh, you uh, won't uh, change anything else here. Next. And uh, after uh, this review page, you can click on create environment. Uh, so it will take a uh, while, a uh, few minutes, and uh, while it's preparing, uh, let me uh, provide some introduction to what, to what we are going to uh, uh, test today, uh, um, what we are going to uh, learn. Uh, so uh, it's all about APIs, which is application programming interface, which is for computing uh, interactions uh, uh, with each other. So uh, as opposite to user interface, uh, this must be uh, good for computers to talk with um, each other. And uh, in modern times, we mostly use RESTful APIs, uh, which uh, have uh, two main um, uh, entities in, th in them. First one is resources. Uh, they, um, um, they as um, nouns and the second thing is methods which are similar to verbs so we do uh, methods on resources and if we map this uh, on modern uh, internet uh, resources are uh, basically urls and methods are http methods like post get put and delete uh, which can be used to provide uh, meaning of our action what we want to do with this particular resource and um, um, uh, API is quite important in modern world at, as it relates to how we build applications in uh, modern world. Actually, uh, we usually split them into layers. Uh, we have front end layer, we have back end layer, and we have database behind of um, back end. And uh, we need uh, somehow provide uh, communication uh, between front end and back end. And uh, uh, this is. Uh, uh, API is uh, for. Uh, uh, we uh, will also uh, check um, uh, uh, and uh, um, deploy and create and use AWS Lambda uh, technology, uh, Lambda function, uh, which is uh, probably most popular, not probably, uh, in fact, most popular serverless uh, platform in the world. Um, so it, it um, allows us to deploy our code directly into the cloud without using any service or even containers. And on this drawing, you can see that uh, we will build something very similar to this drawing, uh, which I uh, which I have taken from uh, AWS um, site. So uh, we have user computer with front end and it calls um, AWS uh, service uh, 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 behaving like a, a API proxy, and then it triggers our Lambda, and after that, a Lambda will communicate with uh, its persistent storage. So this is how it will look after we build it. And a um, couple of words about a AWS Chalice itself. So uh, AWS Chalice is a, a micro framework uh, in Python created uh, by AWS. Uh, so uh, with very uh, high level of integration with AWS. And actually uh, for uh, those who are familiar with Python Flask, it's very similar uh, to this uh, very popular framework, but it's integrated uh, with AWS and uh, which help us to uh, create resources in AWS automatically. So uh, you can um, check uh, the link uh, uh, to uh, Chalice repository and they have great documentation. They have um, like um, tutorials and uh, everything is quite great in, in, in this um, uh, repository. Uh, so uh, I think that's it. And if you check, uh, you should already have your uh, Cloud9 environment deployed. So let's... Uh, um, um, uh, let's um, talk a little bit about our agenda today. So today we are going to uh, create uh, some basic API using AWS Chalice. And uh, we have two parts here, like um, basic things uh, to do, uh, getting started, uh, to um, learn how to 
install and uh, deploy uh, um, a boilerplate uh, app to uh, by Ch uh, with Chalice. And then we will consider some uh, more advanced topics uh, as the next part. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, is, is this fine? Um, uh, is this fine for everyone? I mean, uh, do you have uh, any uh, troubles with logging in, with creating uh, environment, or we can uh, go uh, further? So I hope everyone is fine. Uh, so um, um, I recommend you to have um, two windows opened. Uh, Ubuntu, please uh, choose Ubuntu uh, as platform. This is important. So um, I recommend you to open two windows. Uh, first window for my uh, presentation and another one uh, for your AWS console as it would be best, uh, best uh, um, layout for you to follow uh, commands easily. And I will also, uh, I will also uh, put all uh, important uh, commands into chat window. So you can actually copy uh, them from chat window. And you uh, will also take some code from the repository I mentioned. Uh, so we have uh, files, some files here. So be ready to open it and to copy from, from them to your Chalice um, uh, file. Uh, so I think this is it. Uh, and let's start, let's start. So first thing we should do after uh, uh, our env uh, environment ready uh, is uh, installing Chalice, uh, which can be done with quite simple uh, command which I will post into chat as well. So uh, I'm installing Chalice along with HTTP uh, package here, as it's quite convenient. The latest, um, the letter is quite convenient for, for checking and testing of API uh, with uh, HTTP requests. So uh, if you uh, selected uh, Ubuntu platform, then this installation uh, should go with, uh, with no issues. So, uh, right after that, uh, you actually have your Chalice framework uh, uh, ready and installed, installed, and uh, we can st we can create our project now. So, uh, please uh, use the following command to create your project. Uh, um, uh, sorry, I think I should um, change this a little bit. So as uh, otherwise I will uh, post my comments in the bottom of screen, which might be not convenient for you. Uh, so um, please create a new project with the name Cloud9 uh, from capital letters, exactly as this. Uh, we um, use a little trick here as uh, Cloud9 environment doesn't allow you to create IAM roles other than prefixed by uh, Cloud9. Uh, as we are going to create um, IAM role uh, for our deployment, then we need to follow this uh, convention. So please um, call your project uh, Cloud9 from capital letter uh, and uh, then uh, everything will work. Uh, uh, so I hope you already have your project created and uh, you can uh, notice that uh, we now have Cloud9 folder in, inside our environment and if you check this folder, then you can see two files there. Um, first one is FPI and the second one is a requirements TXT, which is empty. So this file is generated by Chilis application. It's a boilerplate file and uh, it provides you an idea how your um, API could look like. So we can see that uh, we import Chilis uh, object from the library and we create um, an instance of this um, object uh, with the name cloud9 and then we have uh, only one uh, uncommented uh, road uh, road uh, created uh, as decorator here so uh, 
you have this road uh, statement and then you have your Python uh, method, your Python function underneath. Uh, so this method uh, basically answer with some JSON, hello world, to any request to root a path. So that's it. Um, just basic, basic thing. Uh, let's deploy it. Uh, well, you you must uh, uh, you must uh, change directory to uh, this project directory, uh, and then and then you can use Chili's deploy to deploy. I'm sorry, not, not quite correctly. So, well, CD Cloud9 and then she is deployed as another command, sorry for, for uh, they are like uh, concatenated. Uh, well, uh, after your deployment uh, done, you can open that link to API provided in terminal window and well, you can see that we have an answer. So my, congr congr my congratulations, uh, we have our API uh, uh, deployed and working and answering to requests, that's it. So you can uh, create your API uh, as easy and as quickly as, as, as this. Uh, of course, it's not uh, like real life API. It also, it only uh, answers with hello world, but uh, then let's check uh, what resources it uh, created for us. So first one, uh, what was created is um, I am role. You can um, uh, check uh, it in your own account or just uh, uh, watch uh, my uh, presentation. Uh, so if we check uh, IAM service and roles, we can see Cloud9 dev role here. And uh, what's inside, actually, we can see that uh, Chili's uh, CLI uh, created a basic Lambda role for us uh, with only permission to uh, post uh, logs into CloudWatch service. So, uh, um, uh, least uh, privilege uh, principle is followed here and nothing uh, nothing more than uh, basic uh, permissions and let's check how it looks like in uh, cloud watch so can we see uh, logs of our api already so in log groups we, we see uh, a log group of our lambda function and we can see um, uh, information about call uh, we've done um, in browser window. Um, next thing uh, which has been created uh, is uh, Lambda itself. So Lambda function uh, created and deployed uh, with this only command, uh, Chalice deploy with Python uh, 3.6 runtime with everything um, uh, configured to make it work with trigger from a, uh, API gateway and we can see our code inside. So it works. And last thing uh, is uh, API gateway mm -hmm. um, API. It, ha it has created as well. So this REST API created for us with only a get method um, linked to root path. So uh, all this uh, has created uh, automatically and we don't need to uh, do anything to get this working. Just uh, use Chili's API command. Okay, so um, let's uh, move further. We, we see that some code is commented here. Let's uncomment it now. 
and I will remove uh, comments uh, just to save uh, space on my screen. So this is it. Uh, we uncommented these two methods and uh, we can see that first uh, method uh, is uh, very similar to, uh, second method is very similar to, to the first one. Uh, it also answers with some uh, JSON. Uh, uh, you can see that we don't need to do something uh, with the JSON to uh, be presented correctly as response with correct uh, content type and everything. Uh, so uh, the second method uh, uh, use some uh, path uh, query uh, to um, provide an answer. And third one uh, uh, is a post method. Uh, and you can see that how, how we can use uh, different HTTP methods uh, in this uh, 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 road uh, mm, uh, description, road statement. So let's save it and let's repeat our Chilis deploy command with this code. Uh, as you can see, deployment is quite fast. So let's go to our API um, our window and let's add hello to the end and uh, with some world like the new. Mm. Um. Mm. I don't have it working for some reason. Ah, okay, uh, so we might need to wait like a couple of seconds to um, have it ready. Uh, so uh, we have an answer now with uh, uh, Daniel uh, uh, as Chilis automatically uh, has taken this uh, from um, URL parameter. And this is an example, how can you pass uh, your parameters through URL. And now let's um, make a request, uh, post request now using HTTP uh, tool. So let's use our API endpoint. And we should add users now uh, at the end and we should um, use some parameters. Like have name and surname as an example of parameters. So you can see that it answers with this data uh, like attribute to me. So I, I posted this uh, for you in chat window just to uh, maybe save your type uh, uh, some time of typing this. Of course, you you must change uh, your API I, uh, ID from my to to yours, and then uh, everything should work. So uh, it answers on our post request uh, with like my data uh, formatted uh, as a user uh, JSON structure. So. Uh, mm. This is it, um, um, everything I mean relate uh, regarding introductionary stuff. So yeah, and uh, well, uh, you can see that everything quite easy uh, uh, for uh, uh, basic, th uh, basic things, but what about uh, more real life case when, uh, well, we don't want to keep our data inside our uh, Chilis application file we want to store it in some persistent storage, right? So uh, how we can do this? Uh, uh, well, uh, now uh, let's switch uh, to, um, to the re repository and let's uh, take uh, example one code from it uh, and please uh, copy it from um, example one file into your Chilis uh, API file. So what's the difference? 
actually uh, uh, we are not going to have anything uh, meaningful in a uh, root path of our API and uh, we don't want to respond with hello world <laughs> to everyone uh, as uh, we want to respond with something meaningful here and the meaningful response would be that we don't have anything, uh, don't have any resource on this path. So uh, uh, I mean uh, 404, uh, not found error message as usual, uh, as we see in the internet, if you can't uh, find a uh, resource. Uh, so you can see that uh, I've imported a not found error uh, exception, uh, which is predefined in Chilis uh, for me. And then I raise it uh, by myself uh, with a message uh, I'd like to have for this particular case. Uh, so if we uh, redeploy the API and check um, root path, then we can see that it answers with correct answer. And if we check uh, what we have in terms of uh, um, HTTP code, uh, well, uh, it answers with uh, uh, 404 code as, as it should uh, answer. Uh, so uh, this is how we uh, raise errors and exceptions in Chilis. And let's now, uh, uh, I'd like to show you how to find uh, this kind of uh, information in uh, Chilis website. So if we open a Chilis website and um, uh, scroll down, they have a link to uh, read the docs uh, site with great documentation uh, of Chilis framework. And here, uh, well, uh, they have uh, uh, error handling uh, topic and you can find a list of all, uh, all uh, errors predefined for you, which you can conveniently use in your code. Uh, so no coding needed, uh, you just raise this error and everything set by Chilis uh, itself. Um, so next uh, thing uh, I'd like to um, talk about would be um, mm, adding uh, persistent storage for our uh, uh, API. So please copy uh, uh, code from example two file. And let's um, talk about it a little bit. Well, um, if we want to use some um, services of AWS from our application, then we need to use AWS APIs for that purpose. And how we do this, uh, we do this through uh, AWS SDK. And they have SDK for every language. And in, in case of Python, it calls both three. And we need to import it uh, to use uh, for actions against AWS resources. Uh, well, uh, if we add packages to our application in Python, we usually add them to requirements.txt file and we can include them into our deployment artifact. Uh, uh, but in case of uh, AWS SDK, you don't need to do this as you can rely on uh, already pre-installed AWS SDK in AWS Lambda uh, platform. Uh, of course, if you want to pin uh, a version of your SDK, you still can include it into your requirements or you can include it as a layer. Uh, but for our uh, case, uh, we don't want to bother with it. So we rely on existing uh, AWS SDK in Lambda platform uh, service. Uh, usually it's not uh, the latest version, but not uh, too old. So uh, it will definitely work for our uh, example application. So in, in line, in line uh, six, uh, we create DynamoDB client to interact with DynamoDB database. Actually DynamoDB database is uh, uh, best uh, um, best uh, choice for um, Lambda as uh, it follows the same approach, uh, serverless, uh, it can be scaled indefinitely and uh, uh, you can pay um, uh, only if you use it, so pay um, uh, um, on demand. Uh, you don't need to uh, have any uh, payments uh, with no uh, traffic on it. Uh, so, uh, um, uh, here you can see that uh, we now have two methods. 
Uh, first one is to create uh, a data in DynamoDB database using update item method. And uh, uh, third method, uh, th third road is to read what uh, have been created in the DynamoDB using uh, get item method. So uh, everything uh, is quite um, simple, I hope. Uh, well, we have a bit uh, weird uh, notation uh, uh, when we describe uh, data for DynamoDB, but it's another topic. Uh, uh, um, it, can, it can look better uh, in uh, case you use uh, not client, but resources from DynamoDB. So if you um, will face it, you definitely will uh, uh, know how to use it uh, probably um, uh, uh, in most convenient way. Uh, for now, we use basic uh, me methods. We create our resources with uh, key uh, user data and uh, we put just everything we got from the request into this um, uh, record. So let's save it and let's deploy it again with the same chalice deploy command. So it's deployed and let's now uh, post our data uh, to our API and to our database. I'm using the same uh, um, the same uh, command I uh, I used uh, before, uh, just uh, with post method and with uh, data name and surname. Um, okay, again. Um, probably too early, yeah. So now it works. And let's check how it looks like uh, in a database. Uh, if we open DynamoDB service, um, you can see a couple of tables uh, already there. Uh, and uh, if you open users dev, uh, items, then you can see that uh, we have our record created in the database for us already. And uh, let's now try to um, read it uh, using users slash name uh, notation. Yeah, so it answers with some data Actually, uh, it answers uh, with JSON formatted as a string, as I um, didn't um, uh, add any um, converter or, uh, to uh, change uh, this. Uh, so uh, we now have our uh, API uh, 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 um, storing our data in persistent storage. So now it uh, more looks like real life thing and you can actually use it as uh, like uh, to store and to retrieve some configuration data, for example. Uh, but uh, well, in modern world, we don't want to um, change our code uh, directly in production, uh, uh, right? So um, uh, we all use DevOps to uh, feel safe when we do change. Uh, uh, we do change since development uh, uh, environment and test them uh, heavily and only after that we uh, push them into production. So how we can use Chilis to have this um, best practice uh, uh, workflow from the beginning. Uh, uh, let's talk uh, first about environment variables. Uh, so um, please um, uh, uh, make your hidden files uh, visible in your Cloud9 environment. Uh, 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 you should click this gear icon and then uh, show hidden files. And uh, after that, you can see that we have a uh, folder in our project. And uh, in this folder, we have config.json file, which is our config for our stage. Actually, Chilis ha has created default stage, which is dev for us. And this is why we had this uh, uh, Cloud9 dev role and the Cloud9 dev function. Uh, 
Uh, so uh, it already considers that we work uh, in development environment. And let's now add um, production environment. So please uh, copy a config JSON file from the repository to uh, your Chilis um, uh, config JSON. Uh, nothing complicated here. We only um, we're only adding uh, second stage, and we also uh, adding environment variables for uh, for every stage. So uh, you can easily uh, add environment variables into your configuration file by uh, this notation, uh, and uh, uh, you can add them per environment, and you can add them for all environments, uh, which uh, depends of uh, of the level uh, you put them. So I've added uh, two uh, variables, uh, I mean one variable for every sta stage with just the name of this environment. Um, let's save it and let's redeploy it. Well, I think I forget some, yeah, bracket. So, after uh, deployment, we can check uh, what changes uh, with our Lambda function. If you check uh, uh, environment variables section of, um, uh, below um, after the code, you can see that uh, our environment variable uh, added so everything looks fine. And uh, let's now take uh, example three file content and put it into our Chilis app file. So in this version of our API, I've just added uh, uh, environment variable uh, uh, on, on the line uh, uh, six. Uh, I've reading it from environment and uh, adding it as internal Python variable for my application. And how I use it? Actually, I use it uh, to make uh, uh, our, uh, my DynamoDB table uh, environment dependent. So now uh, in case of dev environment, I will use uh, user's dev table. And in case of prod environment, and I will use another table. So this is only um, difference with the previous version. And let's deploy this version now. And let's just uh, repeat the last uh, post uh, request just to ensure that uh, we have everything um, working um, as expected. So I've changed uh, a name parameter to create another record in DynamoDB, right? And let's check. Okay, so uh, I have it uh, created mm. with some foreign record in there. Well, might be as we don't have very like clever permissions uh, set for this uh, workshop. Uh, okay, so. Uh, and what about production environment? How we handle this? Well, it's quite uh, straightforward uh, to deploy to production. We just need to add uh, a stage parameter to our Chilis deploy command. So we can we can deploy everything uh, what we have in uh, our uh, uh, in our application um, uh, code, as well as uh, what we have in config JSON. Uh, related to prod stage. So let's deploy. It will create Lambda this time, not update. So it, it will take uh, a bit longer. And if we check um, our Lambda functions, we can see that we have two of them now. And uh, well, um, uh, uh, we we also um, uh, uh, we also have new uh, API URL, as this is different another API uh, created uh, in API Gateway. 
uh, unfortunately, I believe with the same name, yeah, with the same name, but uh, with uh, um, different Lambda attached. So we can uh, use it uh, um, independently of, of the development environment. So uh, now we can open it um, in browser. We can uh, uh, see um, this message we set for, for root path and let's uh, create a resource um, uh, with this API. Uh, so you, you have to change uh, API ID, uh, oh, sorry. Ah. You have to change uh, API ID to uh, align with this new um, API. Yeah, and after that, uh, we should see this new record in our production DynamoDB. That's it. So it works. Uh, this is how we can uh, live uh, with uh, multiple environments uh, with the same uh, Chilis code. Of course, you can have uh, different branches for different um, environments. A development branch for dev environment and the master branch for production. Uh, and uh, so, um, well, uh, I think uh, uh, this is it. Uh, our first uh, part, uh, our training part is over by this. Um, uh, uh, well, uh, um, um, It might be, well, uh, I see a question about, um, yeah, internal server error. Uh, it might be related to um, different issues. Uh, for example, if you uh, try to uh, retrieve some data from database and uh, there is no such data, you will get this uh, server error message uh, as we don't have any, uh, uh, any sophisticated error management in our basic API, right? So, uh, and uh, yes, uh, 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 Limonas is uh, correct. Uh, you can check what happens in your uh, uh, CloudWatch log group. So, uh, uh, for now, if you feel that uh, you are okay with um, all these experiments, please uh, delete uh, your resources uh, to help us um, um, do clean up after every uh, after uh, the workshop, and uh, you can do this easily with this command chilis delete. Uh, so it will delete everything deployed before, and uh, you can do the same for dev environment uh, now. So uh, um, please clean up uh, all the resources just to uh, uh, help us to um, keep uh, our training uh, accounts in in in, in good uh, shape. Uh, well, I have an error uh, because uh, it will um, uh, uh, um, conflict with previous request actually. So it will delete it eventually. Maybe you uh, should wait a little bit. Yeah. And um, so next part of our workshop will be uh, 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 without uh, any uh, training. So feel free to relax and uh, just uh, see uh, my presentation and listen to me. Um, so uh, uh, these topics will raise uh, definitely after you decide to create some real world uh, API for your, uh, uh, for your needs. Uh, and the first uh, question uh, will uh, be probably about uh, pricing as how much it will cost to me, right? Uh, how much I will pay to this AWS company. <laughs> and let's uh, check uh, uh, how it looks like. Well. Uh, I, uh, uh, I've done a uh, cost estimation today morning and it was surprising even for me uh, how, uh, how small uh, uh, fee you should uh, pay to AWS for all this. Uh, 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 so uh, uh, in case uh, uh, our uh, API is quite fast, which is true for this uh, API we created, uh, it takes um, 100 milliseconds to uh, get data from DynamoDB and it takes uh, 300 milliseconds to uh, 
uh, write data to DynamoDB. So, uh, uh, and uh, it's enough uh, to have minimal uh, memory uh, uh, for this Lambda function. And uh, yes, uh, there is free tier and uh, uh, I use this free tier, uh, free tier calculations in my um, uh, example. So if we have 3 million requests uh, in, in a month uh, and uh, uh, 2 million of them are get requests and 1 million of them are post requests for this particular API we created, so we will pay uh, this amount of money you can see on the screen. And uh, the most expensive part here is API gateway um, cost. And, uh, 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 and in uh, case uh, you uh, use uh, HTTP API instead of REST API, which is a new feature in API gateway, you will pay even less, uh, $2 dollars instead of seven. Uh, uh, um, and uh, well, if we limit ourselves to 1 million requests monthly, then we can uh, rely uh, almost uh, completely on free tier and uh, pay uh, literally nothing like cents uh, for all this. So um, uh, cost-wise, everything looks, I believe, quite great here. Um, well, uh, of course, if your Lambda function uh, becomes heavy and uh, uh, requires uh, a lot of memory and the works uh, uh, like for 10 seconds, for example, every call, uh, um, then uh, you will pay more, uh, obviously, as uh, this uh, service, uh, uh, this service uh, uh, um, has a, um, um, pricing structure related to, uh, related of uh, how uh, much resources you use with your Lambda function. Uh, so uh, next uh, next topic is uh, what about different ways to invoke your Lambda function? Uh, is API Gateway the only the only um, option for you? Actually, uh, not uh, the only option, and you uh, can use just a full bunch of uh, um, event uh, resources and invoke your function. Uh, using, for example, scheduled events, uh, which are effectively uh, cron. Uh, you can uh, invoke uh, your Lambda by cron or by CloudWatch events from another AWS services or from events from S3 buckets, um, message buses uh, uh, provided by the AWS. So Chalice allows you to uh, um, use all of them as well as API Gateway. In this case, uh, after Chalice deploy, you will not see any uh, API Gateway at all, but you will see trigger uh, created for uh, your target uh, resource, which you want to uh, get events from. Uh, and the uh, next thing you will think about uh, uh, for sure is, uh, is, it, uh, um, is it mandatory to have all your code inside app.pi uh, file? as uh, after your Lambda, uh, after your API become uh, like uh, grows bigger, uh, you start thinking uh, maybe I can move some, um, some um, part of my code utilities to another file. And yes, uh, Chilis allows you to do this and you can do this in uh, two different ways. First uh, way is to have Chilis lib folder. You can uh, create uh, something like uh, uh, on the screen there, and then import it into your main uh, uh, function. In case of uh, like, uh, in case of small uh, APIs, which is uh, like normal in our DevOps world, it's completely enough. Um, and in case uh, you um, develop some huge project uh, in Chile's uh, uh, complicated, then you can use blueprints. Blueprints are the similar thing as uh, uh, Python Flask has. So uh, it uh, recently went from experimental uh, to uh, general, uh, general availability for Chilis. So now it's uh, like um, normal thing you can use with new versions of Chilis uh, without providing experimental flag. Uh, so blueprints are allows you to define your own structure for the whole application uh, if you need this. And, um, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, and uh, I would also mention that uh, uh, we did a trick 
here on this workshop and we pre-created DynamoDB tables for all participants of the workshop. So those tables uh, can be created from Chile's uh, application at the moment. Uh, Chile's only create uh, permissions uh, for those uh, resources, not resources itself, uh, but it provides uh, a way to uh, define them with CloudFormation or with Terraform. And I know that we have a lot of funds of um, uh, CDK um, framework by AWS as well here. And uh, if you click on uh, this link, uh, uh, if you click on this link, you can see announcement uh, uh, posted in January by AWS that uh, now you can integrate uh, CDK with Chile's and deploy um, Chile's application along with all uh, all the resources you need uh, um, defined uh, in uh, CDK. Uh, so I would like to mention that Chile's also support web sockets if you want to create some chat uh, real time uh, applications. It supports authorizers if you want to uh, limit permissions uh, for your API or use uh, Cognito pools, for example, to uh, have some um, authorization in there. And you can use layers, of course, uh, a very popular uh, feature in Lambda function. Uh, and you can um, describe your layers uh, just in your config uh, JSON file, uh, include uh, different layers for different stage, for example, or same layers for, for, for all the stages. And uh, so you can put some um, uh, libraries in uh, um, in Lambda layers. Um, so I believe this was the last slide. So um, um, uh, um, um, now we can uh, move to Q and A. Yeah, uh, I th I think uh, we could maybe start from. Uh, from the ones I, I've seen a couple of questions uh, in the chat, not also Q&A section. Um, Vladimir is asking, is HLEs only for HTTP API? Uh, well, um, this is just great, great question. As uh, it was me who placed the request uh, uh, to Chile's um, repository, please create uh, um, an option to deploy Chile's API uh, as uh, uh, HTTP uh, API uh, in um, AWS API Gateway, as HTTP API APIs are uh, cheaper, right? Uh, so, uh, and uh, they uh, look uh, most appropriate for this um, use case. Uh, and, uh, well, we are waiting uh, for now, uh, they, uh, and don't exist even as experimental feature of AWS Chilis. So you deploy uh, REST APIs all the time if you deploy uh, Chilis. But uh, I hope uh, developers will add HTTP APIs uh, probably in this year. Uh, we're all waiting for them. Um, I've also noticed one, one question in the chat uh, during the, the, the workshop, the, the whole process. Uh, Roland is asking, uh, what would happen if you need to roll back the latest change? Like, is, is this is this doable easily in, in, in that environment? Uh, well, um, Chile's CLI itself uh, doesn't provide you this uh, functionality, uh, but uh, you can consider uh, Chile's deploy as uh, moving forward all the time. And uh, well, you can uh, switch uh, to some commit in your repository and then just uh, redeploy everything. It will update uh, uh, Lambda function code. It will update uh, resources if needed. So actually, uh, I think uh, uh, it might be even better to uh, avoid uh, uh, rollbacks uh, uh, in favor of uh, um, redeployment of hotfixes instead. Okay, thanks. And uh, Klaus um, uh, is saying that 100 milliseconds is not that fast. And uh, are there any suggested methods of getting under the like 100 milliseconds? Like, uh, is there a way to make uh, make it faster? 
well, if you, uh, ah, I didn't show you one interesting thing. Uh, uh, let me show you right away. Uh, so uh, if you want to um, check uh, how fast is your function, you can use, uh, um, uh, obviously you can use logs of your function, uh, which provides uh, uh, information about uh, how much uh, build, uh, how much uh, um, a real duration of your function. And you can use log insights to easily retrieve this data uh, from your logs. Uh, let me show you. Um, so like, like this. Let's put here. Uh, sorry, wrong syntax. Uh, we select uh, log groups here and then we run our query and you can see uh, yeah no I don't want to do this just build So here you can see all uh, all information regarding uh, your function behavior in terms of cost. So you can see that we sometimes run for as uh, small as like even one millisecond, but we still uh, charged for 100 uh, anyway. Uh, so I believe for any get requests, we will be still charged for 100. And in, in case of post request, we probably will be charged for 300 in case of this particular API. Of course, uh, if uh, for your API, you can be charged for, for like uh, more. Um, I see that uh, also in now going to the Q&A section, I see that Limonos, uh, our speaker actually from, from the last community event, uh, is asking you to compare uh, Kelly's with Zappa. Like, did you did you look through that one as well? Can no, can't can't compare as I'm not familiar with uh, this second thing. Sorry. Okay, and then uh, Martins is asking, what's the best way to test Kelly's app? Uh, well, uh, you can you can invoke it locally. So they provide a quite convenient uh, 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 option to run it locally and you can create some tests uh, locally as well. Uh, and uh, well, I'm not aware of any um, like framework or um, um, approach recommended by uh, Chile's developers uh, themselves. So I believe uh, uh, if you can run it locally, then you can use any uh, Python framework to um, test it. Okay. Uh, also, Lyman has has uh, another uh, question uh, regarding like the CI CD uh, stuff. As far as I could see, there was no CI CD. Uh, this made me think: How actually useful is Kali's for big projects? Uh, like, does, does it fit only on the small needs? Uh, well, um, I believe I showed um, CI CD when we deploy um, two environments and you, could deploy, you can deploy them from different branches. And uh, what do you mean by CI CD? So uh, this allows you to uh, deploy uh, it uh, uh, for testing, then deploy it for like uh, other purposes, different type of testing, and then deploy it to production. So uh, um, not sure I understand uh, why it's not suitable for CICD. Uh, well, Lyman has uh, like added a few points, like what about pipelines? What about commit triggers and, and, and stuff like that? Uh, what about, could you repeat please, sorry. Yeah, uh, what about pipelines uh, or commit triggers, uh, like, you know, the, the, the whole uh, deployment uh, pipeline and process? Like, how compatible is that? Well, actually, um, uh, 
you might be right that uh, in uh, Chalice CLI, we don't have uh, anything like related to uh, to this, uh, but uh, you can still um, package your Chalice uh, application instead of deploying uh, into cloud formation, and then you can uh, um, integrate it with any pipeline you want. So you can uh, use Terraform as well. Uh, so uh, actually what I showed is a, a quick way to use it for to quickly re resolve some uh, um, tasks, to quickly create proof of concepts. If you have already uh, 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 already uh, created, pre-created pipeline and you want to integrate Chalice into it, then you probably should use a low level approach to uh, create your uh, code as, uh, to create your infrastructure as code before uh, using Chalice package command and then you can uh, deploy it uh, with your tools. Okay. Uh, Alari is uh, asking, um, like, uh, is the, is it possible to integrate, uh, like for example, fast API with Kelly's so that I could develop an API with fast API and then deploy it using Kelly's? Like, is it compatible? We have, do you know anything about that? Uh, I'm afraid this is a question for uh, Chile's developers more than me, as I'm not Chile's developers uh, developer, and uh, well, I have some contributions, but not important ones. And uh, uh, great question actually for them. I would like to uh, listen their answer as well. Yeah, so maybe Alari, you know, will be able to to ask that and uh, share share it with the rest uh, of the community, maybe maybe in the Slack channel. Uh, Klaus is getting back to the to the question regarding the like how slow or fast uh, can the the uh, this API be. So his comment is that regarding the speeds, uh, that's only regarding the build amount. Uh, the Im important metric is the actual duration. For example, 2,200 uh, milliseconds to make a write on the DB with zero authentication or anything of the sort. That seems relatively painfully slow. So uh, still like um, the question gets back to the, to the point, like if, is it fast enough uh, once you need like some, some really, really quick responses? Uh, well, uh, uh, it um, depends on uh, AWS resources more than Chile's itself, right? As uh, it depends on how lambda function, how fast uh, lambda function can be. And we all know that uh, uh, there is cold start issue uh, for lambda and uh, they provide some provisioned uh, concurrency uh, as a solution, uh, maybe not very great solution as it uh, jeopardize an idea of uh, pay as you go, uh, as you need to, uh, well, have some uh, lambda functions uh, um, uh, warmed up and waiting for requests. So all uh, this uh, topic uh, related to Lambda function um, uh, issues and problems uh, actually not uh, directly relate to Chilis. Chilis uh, allows you to create uh, those resources and then you in the same position as if you create them uh, by, uh, um, by hand uh, manually in AWS console, right? Or with some other tool and uh, well, in case uh, you need uh, like um, very fast, um, I didn't um, I didn't try this um, web sockets uh, option for Chilis, but uh, well, um, uh, in theory, uh, it must be fast as uh, it aimed um, chat like applications when you want to get response right away, right? So it should work. Uh, like instantly uh, for for user, and uh, well, I don't think it will uh, feel like something slow. So you you can check it, you can test it by yourself. Uh, spending one hour to create this uh, proof of concept and then uh, measure how it works. Um, I've also I saw that also uh, Lyman has added an answer to Klav's question as well. That he well basically he says that. Uh, Lambda with API gateway is, is inherently slower than, for example, EC2 instance. So that's just a trade-off of, of serverless. 
Uh, and I guess, uh, do, do you agree with, with that as well, uh, Daniel? Uh, only if uh, cold start involved, uh, this is known issue, yes. Uh, if uh, you have cold start, you have like, um, I don't uh, remember exactly, but probably one second uh, until Lambda will respond. So in, in case you have a flat, uh, flat uh, load, on your serverless um, application and uh, like you always have uh, some number of lambdas um, warmed up, then you will not uh, experience this um, cold start. And in case of EC2 instance, uh, definitely you will have no cold starts at all. It will answer just, just right away on any response, uh, but you will pay for this. So uh, it's just another, another approach uh, and uh, in case of event-driven architecture, uh, you usually don't care about uh, how fast it will answer. Uh, for example, you just need to do some actions uh, um, after some event appears. Uh, so a lot of use cases can be covered by, by uh, still uh, experiencing cold start. Uh, thanks, Daniel. And I see one more question in, appeared in the chat uh, from, from Roland. Um, she's asking, how difficult is it to add another Lambda that is written uh, in Node.js into Halise? If you want to add one more. Great question. And I, do, uh, and I don't know an answer. And I, I don't think it's possible but well, if we can add layers, um, uh, maybe we can somehow refer to uh, another function, which obviously can't be built with Chalice CLI, um, but maybe can be like, considered as a part of whole, whole thing. But sorry, I can't, uh, I don't have uh, such experience and I can't uh, answer with confidence. That's it possible or not. No, no problem. So uh, I think those are all the questions uh, that I see in the chat and Q&A. Uh, Daniel, any maybe last words from, from your side? Yes. I want to say thank you to Cloudvisor and to Julius as actually this AWS user group was my dream for, for uh, several years. And I even uh, posted some requests to AWS, please uh, let me create it, <laughs> but I failed. I mean, um, I believe I didn't have enough like legal basis and everything. Uh, and now we have user group for AWS through uh, all Baltic states, which, uh, which just great. And my congratulations. And uh, I hope uh, we will have a lot of interesting workshops and uh, uh, talks in uh, Slack uh, in, inside this group. And thank you everyone for, for coming. I was a bit surprised by so many people. Um, you know, Daniel, th thanks a lot. And you know, I think all, all, all you know, uh, next to thank you to everyone, of course, who had attended uh, live today and or is watching the, the recording afterwards, but you know, I think the biggest like thank you, I guess, from everybody goes to you. And uh, um, you know, I'm, as I participated like all the time with you, uh, once you just uh, said that you would like to do this, and I know how much time and effort it, it, it took you to making this workshop happen. So, you know, uh, really thank you. And if uh, if any anybody. Uh, uh, else from 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 the community and, uh, or the people attending here would like to share anything with the local community like in the form of workshop presentation or, or any other so you know pl just please reach out to me and uh, I will definitely find a way to, to make this happen uh, I, I will leave my uh, my contacts once again uh, uh, at, the, at the ending slide but uh, you know like uh, Daniel mentioned, like the easiest way, I guess, for, for most of us just is just to uh, join the Slack group and then we can easily communicate with each other and, and, and discuss a lot of things. 
Um, so once again, be an active part of the community, just you know, to make sure that you haven't missed it at the, at the beginning, I'll now I'll just pass a few links uh, uh, in the chat. Uh, first of all, of course, the, uh, the Slack group, uh, which is, uh, uh, I think, like the first place uh, for, 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 for us to communicate. And I guess a lot of us spend a lot of time there in, in any case. And then I'm happy to see that you know it's it's growing after each event we we are having. Uh, also, uh, there there are meetup groups in, in the meetup platform uh, for the the AWS user groups for for each country. Um, at least at the moment, as we're like uh, thanks to the pandemic, uh, but maybe in, in a good manner, like we, we moved mostly to online events. And that means that like uh, almost all of them are like for, for all the three countries. But uh, um, if we'll do something uh, like uh, in the face-to-face -face, uh, way, so then most probably, you know, it will be only uh, announced in, in those specific uh, meetup groups for like, I don't know, Lithuania, Estonia, or, or, or Latvia. Um, and you know, just before we close and say goodbye, you know, please give us some feedback by answering just you know how how much you like the the workshop. I think uh, it's it's both important for us, but very I think uh, it, uh, Daniel would be very happy to 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 hear your your impression. So I'm just launching a poll. Uh, please just give your answers. Uh, uh, it's, like I said, it's very important for us to, to get some feedback. Okay, I see it's coming in. Actually, um, I saw that at one time we had almost 40 people uh, watching the, the, the live uh, part and about 10 of them were supposed to be, we had the credentials of the, uh, of the training accounts. Okay, 15 people voted. Maybe that's that's it for now. Okay, um, uh, I'm sharing the results. Daniel, do you see that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm happy to see that. Like uh, the most of the people were very happy with it. So that means we're going to the right direction. And like I said, Daniel, a really great topic. And uh, usually uh, I think like for everybody, like the the best practice and like the experience part is, is way more interesting than just watching, you know, some AWS event, uh, which is very, very maybe, maybe standard, not for, not, not meant for uh, everybody. So that's it. Um, thank you once again. Bye. Have a nice rest of the, of the evening and uh, let's keep in touch uh, first of all virtually and then see you on the next events thanks bye bye